Hey guys, uh, welcome once again to our astrological discussions. Today, um, we will be continuing from uh, Firmicus Maternus, his, his book, uh, that it's a compilation book titled Mathesios Libri 8, which is a compilation of eight books. We are, we started in the fourth book, um, page 138, discussing the chart rulers. And now we are going to read further into, um, we started with page 138, I believe, and now we're going to continue on 138 into 139. Over here, we're talking about Saturn. So yesterday we read uh, four about chart rulers. Now we get into more specific discussions about each planet, what happens if that planet is a chart ruler. Um, and reminder that according to Firmicus Maternus, the chart ruler is not the typical chart ruler. You see, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share Oprah Winfrey's chart just as a reference. So if you look over here at Oprah Winfrey's chart, um, we would say that her chart ruler is based on her ascendant, which is in Sagittarius, 29 degrees Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So we would say that Oprah Winfrey's chart ruler is Jupiter, okay, which is in the seventh house in Gemini. According to Firmicus Maternus, however, that is not the chart ruler. And he said that this was widely accepted in his time, which was approximately um, 300 AD, okay, which is, you know, almost 2,000 years ago. He says that the chart ruler is the sign that is next over from the moon. So if you see over here, the moon is in Sagittarius, and the next sign over... If you look, the next sign over from Sagittarius is Capricorn. And Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So according to Firmicus Maternus, Saturn is actually the chart ruler, which is in the 12th house in Scorpio, not Jupiter, which is what's typically accepted today, even uh, from what I've seen in traditional or Hellenistic ancient astrology. Um, um, so far from what I've seen with Chris Brennan, and others, although it's possible that Chris Brennan may have mentioned that I just didn't see everything that he has done. So now we know that Saturn would be the ruler according to Firmicus Maternus, and we're going to go, we're going to read based on what he's writing, and we're going to see what he's talking about. So let's see what he's saying. So he talks about Saturn. If Saturn is your chart ruler according to his method, Let's see what he says. If Saturn is the ruler of the chart, is favorably located and has been allotted the rulership by the waxing moon, he will make the natives proud, arrogant, honored, respectful, serious of good counsel. Okay. And this is interesting, right? Because many times in ancient astrology, Saturn is considered like outright bad. So the question is, why? Is Saturn considered really good over here? So let's see the indicators. It says if Saturn is a ruler of the chart, it's favorably located. So I guess favorably located would, would say that it's probably located in a good house. It's probably in exaltation or in its domicile. And it says it's been allotted rulership by the waxing moon. Okay. Now, in this case, the waxing moon um from what i've seen in past writings the waxing moon works well in a day chart okay where the sun is a you know, a person's born during the day um and a waning moon is better for night charts i don't know if this is a general rule but i've read it a, in a couple of places with firmicus um where he indicates this type of thing so now since saturn is um a diurnal planet as opposed to mars right with, which is nocturnal, um, a waxing moon would seem to make sense. So he's saying if, if Saturn is placed really well, everything looks great, he will make the natives proud, arrogant, honored, respectable, serious, of good counsel. Interestingly, we have arrogant here, which we would say is not necessarily a great trait, but it fits between all of these things. I'm curious to see in Oprah Winfrey's chart that we were looking in before, she has 
according to Firmicus, Saturn is her ruling planet, right? So, so since Saturn is the ruler of the uh, chart, according to Firmicus Maternus, what condition is Oprah? So first of all, it's in the 12th house, okay? Um, that's not a great position to be in. Although, interestingly, I've seen uh, contradictory uh, points about Saturn in the 12th house. Um, and, and this is actually interesting discussion. You know, if you want to write something in the comments, I'd love to learn more about this. I've seen that Saturn is considered, um, is considered um, like it's in its joy in the 12th house. So I would imagine that's considered a good thing. Um, you know, like Mars in the sixth house is also in its joy. Um, these are malefic planets in bad houses. Um, but at the same time, um, I've also seen in many readings that um, Saturn causes like full damage in the in the twelfth house. So, um, so I'm not even sure in terms of the fact that it's in its joy whether it's that's good or not in the twelfth house. I don't know if Saturn is good or bad in the twelfth house. Uh, technically, it should be bad because twelfth house is bad and Saturn causes bad. It's in Scorpio, which you know doesn't fit domicile, exaltation, or any of the other dignities. Except we do have a hint from the fact that Saturn is in its fall in Aries which is ruled by Mars. So Scorpio also ruled by Mars. You know, I would assume it's not a particularly great position. However, its terms in Venus would indicate that it's uh, softened, at least, you know, in, in its expression uh, to some extent. And then Saturn is also, I believe it's a square, right? Uh, 30, 69, yeah. It's squared to the sun. Um, and that looks like a thick one. The sun is um, is actually Kazemi with, with Venus um, within, I think, 17 minutes or within one degree. Um, and so that's doing really well over there. The sun and Venus is lucky um, in the third house. However, it's a square to Saturn in the 12th house. Um, you know, so what the implications of that are, you know, a square to Saturn is not really um, um, great. However, the square that's happening to, to Saturn is coming from Venus and the Sun, which uh, the Sun isn't necessarily the best friend of Saturn. You know, the Sun is about brightness. Leo showing its, you know, its its pride, being proud, um, you know, being abundant, whereas Saturn is more like constriction. So they're not really friends. Um, but with Venus over there, it probably softens the blow to some extent. But that square isn't such a great thing. So Saturn, it doesn't look like it's in great condition in Oprah's chart. Um, as we're discussing what, um, sorry, this is the wrong share. As we are discussing uh, Firmicus Maternus and his um, explanation. Okay, sorry about that. Now I found... Uh, the correct share. So this is what he's saying about Saturn so far. Okay, as long as it's in good condition and it's a waxing uh, moon, um, etc., then it should be fine. Next, he says about Saturn being the ruler of the chart. Their work is respected in judgment, and they fulfill all their duties correctly and prudently. Now, I guess this sort of makes sense because Saturn is very much about setting rules and restrictions. Very analytical. Um, you know, not necessarily in the uh, mercurial, mercurial way like a Gemini, but it's uh, very much about restriction and rules. So in terms of judgment, that definitely makes sense that they're respected and they fulfill their duties. It's about responsibility correctly and prudently. They will, however, always be at odds with wife and children. That, that is an, actually an interesting uh, point. Um, I don't know why there's a specific indication of wife and children. I'm assuming that Saturn is represented as uh, the father or male figure. Sometimes it will be represented in a chart as a masculine figure. So it probably stays in that, um, um, you know, has a bit of a coldness to it. Um, when you are very strict and with the rules, you, you give less room for emotions, for being playful. So I guess that sort of makes sense. Then it says they will be distant, not much occupied with self. 
taking little food but enjoying drink. So this is an interesting sentence. They will be distant. That makes sense. Not much occupied with self. That that makes sense also because uh, Saturn is very much about duty and responsibility. They do what's right and what needs to be done as, as long as Saturn is in the right condition, right? So they're not focused much on themselves as much as doing the right thing. And that's as opposed to Pisces, for example, where they're also dedicated, but they're dedicated more to the other person or to the other or self-sacrifice for the other, uh, but not necessarily in what's right or wrong, more about giving themselves over as a concept within itself. So that's how they can share in this concept. But back to Saturn, it says taking little food, which makes sense about restriction. I don't know why it's about food, though, maybe because food is about enjoyment, right? And Saturn is more about principle. Um, but I would think that that's related more like a Venusian point. But um, I guess there's these generalizations in the chart until we put it all together, then we can see where the other things come in and then we sort of have a process of elimination, right? And then it says, but enjoying drink, which seems random to me. Um, enjoying drink uh, with Saturn, um, maybe as a coping mechanism, but you know, for all the hard work that they do throughout the day, I just don't understand why drink. You know, why not, you know, pharmacological or drugs or things like that or um, other things. Um, so th then it says these men are of moderate size, pale, sluggish. They'll have stomach trouble and vomit easily, be attacked by malignant humors and constantly a prey to internal pains. They'll be malevolent, anxious, hardworking, troubled in mind, and always making a, so I'm going to see that in a second by always making a, but this is an interesting paragraph. It says they're of moderate size. I guess that makes sense because Saturn is about restriction again, as opposed to Jupiter, which is somebody who has like Jupiter on their ascendant is going to be tall. Um, they're going to be pale. They're going to be sluggish. I guess that, you know, comes with the, I, I guess like the earthy Capricorn, but I don't know how that relates to to Aquarius, you know, uh, but, you know, I don't know exactly where this comes from. And this, it says they'll have stomach trouble and vomit easily, um, be attacked by malignant humors and constantly prey on inter to internal pains. This makes sense when a person, for example, is not focused on themselves or their own health. They're focused on what they need to do and their duty. Then they can they can hurt themselves without paying attention because they're not looking for them for their own uh, benefit. Right. Then it says they will be malevolent, anxious, hardworking. So I don't know where this malevolence comes in because we already said that Saturn is put in a great position. You know, it should have like a sense of strictness. Malevolence is a very strong word. Maybe, you know, it had a different implication back then, or maybe the translation is not, you know, exactly correct because malevolent, you know, you think of like a wild, angry person. Um, anxious makes sense. Hardworking makes sense. Troubled. In mind, I guess that makes sense as well. Then he says, always making a, let me move to the share. Always making, it's always making a living in a connection with water. Okay, I have no idea where water comes in. I'm assuming that the nature of Saturn is, you know, is, has water maybe it's wet or something or moist um i actually would think that it's dry i'm not sure i have to check that out so now what else does it say about saturn it says if saturn number six if saturn as ruler of the chart is in his own house or terms okay so i'm going to skip to the conclusion first so i know what they're getting at um okay so it says the indication is for a high position fame and every type of good fortune which is in the power of the houses so what is so how do you get this fame and this good stuff if saturn as ruler of the chart is in his own house or terms or in the house or terms of jupiter or of the sun in a diurnal chart the indication is for high position fame and every type of good fortune which is in the power of the houses if he is in the house or terms of Mars or in the house of the moon, right? So the house of Mars would be in Scorpio or in Aries and the house of the moon would be in Cancer 
the natives will be unhappy, hardworking, poor, low class, obscure, and suffer constant grief. So this is actually an interesting point because over here, we know that Saturn is um, the malefic of the diurnal chart, and so is Jupiter and the sun. And it mentions the diurnal chart. So it makes sense that there's an indication for high position, fame, and every type of good fortune. But the weird thing is that if he says if he's if he's in the house or terms of Mars, so you know that you know that would make sense where it would be unhappy. Or in the house of the moon, which is in Cancer, that makes sense because uh, Saturn is in detriment in Cancer. Um, it says the natives will be unhappy, hardworking, poor, low class, obscure, and suffer constant grief. The only thing is that if they're saying he's going to be unhappy with the moon, you know, in the house of moon, meaning in Cancer, the Saturn is not either happy in Leo. But over here it says... If Saturn, as ruler of the chart, is in his own house or terms, or in the house in terms of Jupiter or of the sun, which means that if this, if Saturn is in Leo, in a diurnal chart, then that's considered good, even though Saturn is in its detriment in Leo. So that's something interesting to think about. You know, there's these types of things that come up that's really curious, you know. Um, I guess the emphasis here that he's trying to say is a difference between a diurnal chart and a nocturnal chart. And he's saying, if Saturn is in his own house or terms, which means in Capricorn or Aquarius, or in the terms of Saturn, or in the house or terms of Jupiter, which means in Sagittarius, or in Pisces, then he says, or of the sun, meaning, or the house of ter or terms of the sun, you know, that makes sense for a diurnal chart that it would be good makes sense but in terms of being in leo that's considered detriment so that contradiction is an interesting contradiction the indication is for a high position set or now if the house if he's in the house of, or terms of mars which is aries which is its fall that makes sense scorpio is not officially a detriment or a fall but over here he's sort of generalizing that Scorpio is a bad place. Or it says in the house of the moon, which is in Cancer, that makes sense, then they'll be unhappy. So this is an interesting point over here to discuss. Over here he's saying, since we're focused on diurnal or nocturnal, Saturn is a diurnal planet. So if the chart is diurnal, okay, then if Saturn has diur diurnal oriented planets, including Jupiter or the sun in their house, in their uh, terms, or, you know, in their signs, etc., then it's going to be really, really good. Even though being in Leo of the sun would be a detriment technically. So I don't know how to reconcile that. So I'd love to hear some opinions, you know, or thoughts on why in such a case, it doesn't make a difference in terms of Saturn being in Leo as um, as opposed to the you know problem of being in detriment, but being in good terms in terms of being a diurnal chart. Um, okay, so let's continue. Number seven, these evils are greater if it is a nocturnal. So we ended off saying about that it's not good. If he's in the house or terms of Mars or in the house of the moon, the natives will be unhappy, etc. So it says that these evils are greater if it is a nocturnal chart. Okay, so now he's saying that Saturn in a diurnal chart is doing well. He says, if it's a diurnal chart and then you have nocturnal stuff going on, like the Mars, the moon, and things like that, then it's not good for Saturn. He says, but it gets even worse if the chart is a nocturnal chart because Saturn is not at home in a nocturnal chart. So these evils are greater if it's in a nocturnal chart and the waning moon allots the rulership of the chart. Okay, then the native is partly or completely bald, his eyesight is bad, or his eyes are constantly running. 
right? So then the question becomes, God's constantly running. They also will have lung disease, dropsy, God, epilepsy, or will be spastics, especially if the ruler of the chart in dejected signs or degrees is an aspect to the waning moon. Okay, so clearly over here, when he's trying to give an indication about the quality of the chart ruler, um, the impact of a diurnal or nocturnal chart, and if it's, you know, like he said, a nocturnal chart aspecting the moon with a, you know, a diurnal planet like Saturn is not good. Now, the specifics of how he came to the conclusions that the native is partly or completely bald, like eyesight is bad, eyes running. Um, I'm not clear on why he chose these things. Um, I'm assuming that Saturn has some sort of uh, connection to eyes or, or the hair or something like that. Um, I don't know about that. If you know more about that, feel free to comment. Let me know. It also says they'll have lung disease. Dropsy, gut, epilepsy, or be spastics, especially if the ruler is in dejected signs or degrees or an aspect of waiting. So I found it interesting when it says things like especially. What that means is that he's saying they're going to have these things and it's going to for sure happen if it's um, an aspect of waning moon. So that means that if you have a waning moon, you can definitely expect to have these things, you know, lung disease, dropsy, gut, et cetera. But if you don't have an aspect of the waning moon, you might have these things. I find these comments interesting because he's basically saying he's not sure. He's like, you could probably have a lot of terrible things happen and it's much more likely if, you know, these, you know, this, the, the reason why this is important is that it gives insight into the perspective of, um, you know, of the ancients and how they perceived astrology themselves. Um, and so let's continue and finish off Saturn. But if benefic planets are in favorable aspect to Saturn when he is ruler of the chart, the illnesses we have listed will be cured. So this is an interesting point. Let's finish off either by the protection of some god or by a competent physician. This is an interesting point because he says that, okay, so you have a Saturn, right? Your Saturn is in bad condition. It's aspecting the moon, but aspecting the moon that's a waning moon in a nocturnal chart will give all these negatives that we said above, but it will be cured if you have an aspect to a positive planet, I guess, to Venus or Jupiter. Um, and that's interesting because it doesn't say you're not going to have it. You're going to have it, but it's going to be cured. And that's an interesting distinction that we can learn from when reading a chart. Because many times you look at a chart and you'll see a planet that has a mix of um, good and bad. And over here, he's explaining how that priority is, is considered. How do, we, how do we consider the priorities? When we look at a chart, we first want to see whether it's a nocturnal chart or diurnal chart. And whether that planet that is the chart ruler matches okay if it matches it's already on good terms okay things are going to be okay now like we said on top that if this diurnal planet saturn is in the house or terms of of the diurnal planets of jupiter and the sun then these are great things are going to happen um however if it's a diurnal chart and it's in the house or terms of nocturnal planets like mars or the moon then he's uh, then things are going to be hard, okay? It says like hardworking, poor, but it doesn't mention sickness, okay? It says you're going to su suffer grief, but not sickness. It says, however, the grief and the sickness actually gets worse if the chart ruler is a diurnal planet in a nocturnal chart, which means that, that the, the the planet is not at home in this chart. Um. And um, and he calls it a waning moon. <clears throat> then it says that he's going to start having like terrible things happening. And then it says if if he actually has an aspect from Saturn, which is a diurnal planet, to the moon, which is the representative of a nocturnal planet, 
then stuff really gets bad. Okay, so that's like serious priority setup over here. Okay, so one of the things that I would look out for when looking at a chart is, is it a diurnal chart or is it a nocturnal chart? Then I would say, okay, now is the chart ruler diurnal or nocturnal, does it fit? Next, I would say, is that planet, let's say like Saturn over here is a diurnal planet, is it aspecting the nocturnal representative of the moon? Or if it's Mars, which is a nocturnal planet, is it aspecting uh, the sun? In those cases, um, things can get pretty intense. Now, he says, however, the next priority is that you should know that even though, you know, this Saturn, which is a diurnal planet, is aspecting the moon, which brings sicknesses and everything. However, if benefic planets are an aspect to Saturn when he's ruler of the chart, then they'll be cured. Okay. And this is such a powerful point because, you know, when you see this mix, you're saying, okay, I see it's connected to good planets, bad planets, diurnal, nocturnal. Then we say, um, you know, is it good or bad? I'm going to get some bad or some good over here. He's saying you will get, in this case, you will get the bad, but because you have an aspect to good planets, it will be cured. Not that you won't have it at all. Okay. And then he explains if a malefic planet, however, attacks Saturn, the evils we've de described will increase. The native may die from the sicknesses brought about by bodily humors, or they die in watery or humid places or in hidden and unknown places. Saturn, as ruler in the house or terms of Mercury, makes malevolent prisoners or perjurers hostile to both parents and brothers. Now, this is very interesting um, on a few levels, because the question is, like, where does he come with, come with these specifics, right? So he says, if a malefic planet, uh, you know, attacks Saturn, these evils are described will increase. So interesting term here is attacks, because if we look at Oprah Winfrey's chart, we see that Saturn is in the house of Mars, okay? So, you know, is that considered attacking? He doesn't say aspecting or in the house of the malefic. Before he specified if it's in the house of the malefic, over here he's saying attacking. Um, so, I mean, an attack would probably be considered a square. I guess a trine is not really an attack. You know, I don't know how much we can also specify in terms of, you know, what he means. I don't know how careful his wording was when he, you know, or or how the translation interpreted this. I'm sure the tra translation, they tried their best. I'm, I'm not sure why the terminology here is attack. Um, so then he says that they'll increase. Then it says the native may die from the sicknesses brought about by bodily humors or they die in watery or humid places. Watery or humid, I'm not sure why it says that. Um, again, it mentions water. So, you know, I, I guess Saturn by its nature is, is probably water or humid. Um, I hope so, because then it would make sense. Um, it says in hidden or unknown places, I guess that makes sense in terms of Saturn being restriction. Um, and then Saturn as ruler in the house or terms of Mercury makes malevolent poisoners. I thought that said prisoners. Malevolent poisoners or perjurers hostile to both parents and brothers. So perjurers make sense. You know, perjury, like they would lie because Mercury um, is basically communication. And because Mercury, you can say, is speech or communication. And you can say that um, Saturn with Mercury is bad speech. So that's perjury, makes sense. In terms of poisoners, I guess, you know, poison is related to the mouth, you know, because like you'll, you'll drink poison or something like that. And bad mouth, I guess, it means like bad stuff happening with your mouth. Um, and it says hostile to both parents and brothers. So, I mean, I know Mercury represents maybe the child of the Zodiac. I don't know if that's a modern astrology um, thing that was recently, you know, considered a part of astrology or if there's something to that, you know, they say like uh, the sun or Saturn is like masculine or parents, the moon, you know, is like the mother and Venus is relationships and cancer is also cancer is the moon, I guess it's like the mother and Mercury, Gemini is like the baby. 
So I don't know if that's why it's like brother, like siblings. Parents, I'm not sure. I'm assuming because of Saturn. But I would assume that Mercury's placement would also have to be bad. But Mercury is sort of like um, chameleon. You know, it's it's a neutral, not not neutral, but chameleon. It sort of like goes with the flow. You know, whatever another planet is doing, Mercury is converted to that approach. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these ideas. Again, I'm reading, you know, the ancients um, work to get a better understanding of what astrology was. I think that we have a great layout over here of priorities in terms of reading a chart and the implications. Um, Until next time, please like and subscribe and have a great day.